any number around 310, so 38 and 306. Anyone you can see at the front getting away from the premises. Away from the premises. We believe he's inside of a number, number 308 or 306. So we were just arriving and the helicopter uh, had was, was witnessing what was happening and it was telling us that uh, Salvador had, had killed Mrs Silva. So we just pulled up on the scene. We were then told by the helicopter that he was jumping through the back gardens and we were told that there was another family, there was children and other people at the bottom of the gardens, about four or five houses away. So the first thing we've got to do is obviously get hold of these people and make, make sure that they're safe. Because I had no doubt then, because of what he'd done, that he was going to kill more people. No doubt at all. Uh, lots of officers arrived, uniform and plain clothes officers then. And it was then we had to get the members of the public out of the houses. There's somebody bare chested in their back garden with a machete, banging on their back door and stuff like that. Uh, to the extent that I had to tell the team to let's knock on the doors. If we didn't get any replies, let's start kicking the doors down. Let's smash the windows, but we need to get the public away from their houses because we had no control of him at that time. Because we, we couldn't see him at, at, at the front. We smashed the windows and the doors to try and get into the house. And he, he then came to the front room and he was a couple of feet away from us with the machete. Uh, he started to smash the telly up. He was shouting. At that time, I was trying to speak to him because that gave the other officers you know, a few houses along time to get through the houses, into the back gardens and try and warn the, the kids and the family that he was there. The first thing that came into my head was, hello mate, what's your name? And I have no idea why I said that, but all I wanted to do was just get him to talk to me, just to buy some time. His eyes were absolutely wide. He wasn't speaking to me, but I, I could see that he was enraged. and. You know, I, I was scared because I was fully aware of what he'd done before. I feel for, for my life and, and the officers' lives as well. Because these officers, we all knew what he'd, he'd done. And, you know, and we, we couldn't save Mrs. Silva, we couldn't, but we knew what he'd done. But we knew we had to get the public out of there. As one of the sergeants was closing the back door, he came through the back door and was chasing the sergeant through the actual house. And we managed to get out, shut the front door. And again, he, he couldn't actually get through the front door and he ended up trapped in a small room. We were speaking to him for some time and then the armed response team turned up, the armed officers turned up and they took over. Sometimes I think people forget, cops are human, you know, we have wives, families, kids, partners, and, and there was at least a dozen of them put themselves between him and the family at the end of the garden and other members of the public. But we, you can never forget, no matter how brave we were, the fact that Mrs. Silva you know, lost her life that day and it, no matter how brave the cops were, it, it still, you know, racked with sorrow that we, we couldn't save her. There's nothing we could have done for her.